What is the most successful lie in the history? If you tell the truth, you won't be in trouble. Yeah, mom. I fell for that a few times and learned that lesson quickly. This hurts me much more than it hurts you. I like the arguably less effective I'm going to find out either way. If you tell me the truth, you won't also be in trouble for lying to me. During Gabble 2, the British put fake documents on a corpse and dropped the body in the waters to be found by the Axis. It detailed an attack that never happened. Here's the best part. The plans for D-Day were found in a similar manner. The actual plans. But they were ignored because the Nazi leaders thought it was just another rule. The man they used was a Welsh homeless man named Blinda Michael who had perished from the consumption of rat poison. They had to do quite a bit of thought about making the corpse to have appeared to have died in the conditions presented by the mission. There was a great deal of concern that the Nazis would detect the deception and not take the bait. I thought he died of pneumonia, making drowning easier to fake. There was claims earlier that he died of that, but it was speculated to be mistaken. A later investigation showed he died from ingesting rat poison. They are unsure if it was out of hunger, as it was a paste on bread to attract rats, or if he committed suicide. Operation Mince One of the most impressive ones was when Great Britain convinced everyone during Wii that carrots were the reason why their vision was great when it was really the recently discovered airborne interception radar technology. I still know people that are convinced eating carrots as kids will ensure 2020 vision for life. When I was a kid, my older sister knew it wasn't true, but convinced me it was. She thought it was funny to see me constantly begging for more carrots and getting me to do her chores so I could have hers. Well, now we're adults. She's had glasses for 15 years and I'm in my 30s with 2015 vision. I know it's not from the carrots, but it's pretty fun to ask her if she's got new glasses lately while I'm camping on a carrot like Bugs Bunny. Ain't you a stinker? Green leafy vegetables are far more important than carrots except the Vita deficient crowd. Certain carotenoids are amazing, thus Maku Health exists and works. We should put marigolds back in the kitchen. To be clear, carrots are good for your vision. They can't help you see in the dark, but they are good for your eyes. A taps. Woo W. Smithsonian Mark Comments. Culture Rare. Why Propaganda Campaign Popularized. Math that carrots help you see in the dark 28,812,484. Convincing the Germans we were landing at Calais was bigger and better. The lie that made a man the ruler of a third or quarter of humankind. Darius the Great, R522-486 BCE, governed the Achaemenid Empire at its peak. His rule extended from the Indus Valley to mainland Greece, and from the Scythian steppes to Egypt. A remarkably high and possibly unparalleled percentage of the world population were his subjects. Darius reorganized the satrapies, which made the administrative system of his empire more efficient and introduced major financial reforms as well. It was never a secret that Darius became the king of kings after a successful coup. He and a small group of other aristocrats, primary sources refer to seven men in total, infiltrated the residence of the previous ruler and killed him after a brief clash with his guards. Shortly afterwards, Darius, who was also a member of the royal house, emerged as the leader of the conspirators and assumed full power. So far so good, things become strange when it comes to the identity of Darius's predecessor. As far as the primary sources are concerned, Cyrus the Great, R559-530 BC, had two sons, Cambyses is R530-520 BCE and Bardiae. The former succeeded him as king of kings, while the latter was given governorship over the eastern provinces. Fearful of opposition, Cambyses had his brother assassinated, but kept it a secret. Then he undertook the campaign that ended up bringing Egypt into the Persian fold. While Cambyses was in Egypt, he started acting cruelly and erratically, suspected everyone, disrespected the local traditions and the sort. Then a rebellion broke out back in Persia, led by a Magus Zorosaurian priest named Gumata. The man claimed to be Bardia, and the people, ignorant of the latter's death, flocked to his banner. It also helped that he took short-term populist measures, such as tax cuts. Cambyses rushed home to quell the revolt, but died on the journey. His death was listed as an accident, or even a suicide, out of desperation for the usurpation. Gaumata got to rule as Bardia, and even took over the latter's harem. Almost nobody suspected he was an imposter, because on top of everything else, he also bore an uncanny physical resemblance to the dead prince. 
The first man to suspect something was off was a nobleman named Ottonese, who would later become one of Darius' six companion. Ottonese knew about Gaumata's existence, and was also aware that at some point his ears had been cut off as a punishment. So he asked his daughter, who was Bardia's and now Gaumata's wife, to check his ears while he slept. The truth was brought to the light. Needless to say, the story was very convenient for Darius. By killing Gomata, he saved the Empire from a fraudulent, cunning, and ruthless liar who had gone as far as to assume a dead man's identity and risk civil war in order to take the throne for himself. Darius simply punished him for his crimes and reinstated the royal office to the house it belonged to, the Achaemenid dynasty. But what if the whole story was a lie? What if there was no Gomata and the man Darius killed was the real Bardia? Indeed, scholars have noticed a lot of problems with the traditional narrative, apart from its convenience. How could the real Bardea's death be kept secret for so long from everyone except a simple Magus? And what for? How likely is it that Bardea had a doppelganger who had also the knowledge, courage and brains necessary to take his place at the right moment? And how is it possible that not even Bardia's wives and inner circle were able to see through Gumata's lies? Some scholars go as far as to suspect that Cambyses' madness might have been the product of Darius's propaganda. Herodotus, for example, narrates that the king looted Egyptian temples, insulted the local gods, and even killed the sacred bull appear. The problem is, none of that appears in any contemporary Egyptian source. In fact, there are inscriptions showing that Cambyses honored the bull that died in 524 BC with a rich sarcophagus. If things were so, it cannot be excluded that Cambyses was also assassinated by Darius, who we know served as his spear bearer. His death might have prompted his brother Badia to take power since Cambyses was childless. Darius proceeded to eliminate him too, and then created the lie about Gomata. Of course, it cannot be excluded that Badia did indeed rebel against Cambyses. That doesn't change the crux of the matter, which is the story about Gomata, which is the story about Gomata. So there you have it. One of the most powerful monarchs of antiquity and a possible lie that went unquestioned for millennia by almost everyone. I can't believe I read that whole thing and it didn't end with the undertaker dropping mankind off a 20 year cage onto a table. I got halfway through and I legit had to scroll to the bottom to double check. It's hilarious that I'm not the only one who thought this. Totally thought this was going to end with Jake. I made this all up. Maybe in the old days, but there was a time I used to believe without a doubt that Undertaker and Cain were brothers, and Cain wore a mask because Undertaker threw acid on his face out of animosity. Please listen carefully as our menu items have recently changed. We are experiencing higher than normal call volumes. If I hear that message every time I call, no you aren't. The real message is, we're paying for the bare minimum, so fuck you and wait so true. Customers used to always tell me hire more people, but the people above kept telling us we don't need to hire more people, that we need to improve our numbers. Fat will make you fat. Eating that full of sugar pre-made meal won't. Wait, sherbet is fat free, so I can eat the entire tub, right? Eating the entire tub is fine. Eating the sherbet inside, probably not so much. Plenty of people have gotten fat off of eating too much sherbet, but nobody has ever gotten fat off of eating too many sherbet containers. I acknowledge that I have read and agree to the above terms and conditions. Yes, I am 18 years old. We and we ye be like. Sorry, we don't accept youngsters. Go out and age a bit. Return three seconds later. Welcome to the army. Literally how it happened, go back out, have a few birthdays, then come back wild and fucked up, but makes a lot more sense when you remember this was the era of children working in coal mines from age four. My great-grandpa fought in Y at 15 years old. Terms and conditions longer than a few short paragraphs should be illegal if it expected that the user read them. There should be a new legal framework for the other stuff that provides protection to both parties. We don't know the most successful lie because it's a lie we don't know of yet. Fact. Fact. Or lie. Or lie. God damn it. They got us on a technicality. Iceland and Greenland. Nah, Iceland's name is well earned. Krofner, Floki, hiked up some mountains, saw that the Ford Vattensfjordur, Wart of Jord, lol, was full of pack ice and henceforth, he came up with the name Iceland. There were two other names given to Iceland. Nadodur Astadsonson came up with Snowland because he saw snow fall on the mountains before he departed the country. 
and Goddess Vavasan came up with the name Gardashomur, Akai Isle of Gardashomur, Akai Isle of Garda, named after himself. Plus, the winters are pretty long, so Iceland really is Iceland for a decent portion of the year. So basically, it's only Greenland that's alive. Indeed, the reason for the naming actually is because the Viking chief wanted to attract settlers, so he gave it a wildly inaccurate but promising name in order to lure people in. The name really was supposed to be false advertising. We are experiencing higher than normal call volume. Your call is very important to us. Every single customer service line. Edit my first awards with and sweet ever. Thank you. Your call is very important to us. Please stay on the line until it's no longer important to you. Or you get disconnected when we realize you ain't giving up. Indeed, the reason for the naming actually is because the Viking chief wanted to attract settlers, so he gave it a wildly inaccurate but promising name in order to lure people in. The name really was supposed to be false advertising. Please listen closely as our menu items recently changed. Just get good marks in high school. Once you go to a top-tier college, your life is practically set and sorted. There's no easy street unless you're a trust fund kid. You are not beautiful, but you could be with this product. Well, the first part ain't a lie. There are hot singles in my area. That diamonds are valuable. They are extremely valuable in terms of their usefulness, but not as engagement rings, which which was a con made up by the diamond industry. Engagement rings were made up by the diamond industry. Wedding rings used to be enough. Beethoven was Austrian. Hitler was German. Nicely done, Austria. Who thinks that Beethoven is Austrian? Never heard that. The, the Brexit bus lie. We send the U.S. 350 million a week. Let's fund our NITs instead. And those same exact people. The IH isn't working. Let's adopt private insurance instead. As an American, please don't let them do that. I am begging you. The protocols of the elders of Zion. It's indirectly caused World War I, among other things. Here, take this opioid. Our technicians swear it is not addictive. If big pharma. If I have one that's not about Jeebus or religion. McDonald's lied and spread false information about that lady launching a frivolous lawsuit against them just to get rich after she burned herself with their scalding hot coffee. The lie was so successful people to this day believe the lady was just looking to make a quick buck. Another one would be the propaganda distributed by the British during World War II. They claimed that carrots improved eyesight. The reality is they wanted to hide the fact that they had invented radar from the Nazis. So they picked a food that was plentiful and well known to be eaten by their population and claimed the improved eyesight that resulted from this allowed them to better spot German aircraft. That lady got the shittiest deal ever. She is synonymous with frivolous lawsuits to this day, and she was absolutely in the right and deserved compensation. Her injuries were extensive, and the temperature the coffee was served at was 100% dangerous to consume, or in this case, have it spilled on you. In the beginning, she was only asking for McDonald's to cover her medical expenses, so this lawsuit was exactly the opposite of frivolous. Fused labia is a combination of words that is forever burned into my mind. Not to mention multiple McGars had been reprimanded numerous times prior to that by food safety inspectors, etc., for keeping their coffee dangerously hot, so as not to have situations like this. The woman had to have multiple skin grafts. Her genitals were literally burned shut. And like you said, she just wanted the hospital bills covered, and they initially tried to settle for some paltry amount like ten dollars, which wouldn't cover it. So her lawyers were like, fuck it, let's go, big. Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction, I fucking swear to God. Even Saddam Hussein believed he had those weapons. I find that hilarious. Thinking of Saddam yelling at his underlings, well check again, damn it. Because even he wasn't sure of what he still had hiding in some bunker somewhere. Not to mention multiple McGars had been reprimanded numerous times prior to that by food safety inspectors, etc., for keeping their coffee dangerously hot, so as not to have situations like this. The woman had to have situations like this. The woman had to have multiple skin grafts. Her genitals were literally burned shut. And like you said, she just wanted the hospital bills covered, and they initially tried to settle for some paltry amount like ten dollars, which wouldn't cover it. So her lawyers were like, fuck, it let's go big. The customer is always right. 
the customer is, is not always right. Sometimes, the customer is a toy. What a disappointing thread. I was hoping to hear stories of bluffs during battle maneuvers or historical political intrigue. Instead, just a bunch of pithy one-liners. In a Portuguese town, there are the remains of a 14th century castle that withstood a desperate prolonged siege in 1368. A local woman broke the enemy's resolve by baking some cakes with the last of the flour. The bread was then sent to the Spaniards in a fake show of plenty, with a message, if you need any more, just let us know. Fearing a much more prolonged siege, the Spaniards withdrew. The absolute gamer. There is a similar story in, I think, The Art of War. Where Sun Tzu has like 300 men left to defend this four town. He knows he's absolutely screwed, so he rolls with it. He opens the gates and sits on the fort wall playing his pipe while the enemy generals debate what to do. Convinced he knows something they don't, they pack up and leave. Editor as a few have pointed out I misremembered the story. Zhu Liang is credited with the gambit, but it's likely fictional. Here's a good one for you. Hat pen Wikipedia, or Wiki Zhuan Pujolagak percent Kri percent Ada, he wanted to be a spy for the Allies during Wyatt. The British rejected him, so he just started making crap up to send to the Nazis by using reliable British news sources he could get in Spain, Portugal. The British figured out what he was doing and recruited him. He ended up with a spy ring that the Nazis bankrolled, including paying for a funeral and pension to the widow of someone who never existed. He helped create confusion with the Normandy landings by feeding information for Operation Fortitude, fake army to throw off the actual landing location. Then on D-Day, he radioed German officers at 3 am to warn them of a pending invasion, but no one was there to receive his call. When they finally established communications at 8 am, the invasion had already begun and he was authorized to basically give every detail of the invasion since it was too late. Of course, he was also able to berate the communications officer for being late and wasting the opportunity to fight off the invasion. He was awarded the most excellent order of the British Empire for his contributions to the war. Oh yeah, he was also awarded an Iron Cross from the Nazis that Hitler had to personally authorize. One of two, Hat Peps, N. Wikipedia, or Wikipedia Chapman, he also received both as a British double agent during WI. He became a German spy to get out of prison shortly after the war started. The Germans trained him and sent him to England to sabotage a bomber factory. After he parachuted back into England, he turned himself into the police almost immediately. From then on, he worked for the British and was awarded the Iron Cross for sabotaging the factory, when in fact he and Mi-5 just faked the whole thing. There was a countercharge in the Civil War that rings a bell now based on what you said just now. The overview is essentially a group was ordered to hold a hill, no matter what, and wait for reinforcements. The enemy was shooting the hell out of them to try and take the hill before they were reinforced. Enemy is advancing in the hill, and the defenders realize they can't win by holding ground anymore. They have like one shot left each. They can't lose the hill, or the reinforcements would never be able to reinforce the position and support a bigger advance. The commander, Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain, thanks a spent hammer, orders them to fix bayonets and countercharge, since it's the only option that isn't obviously going to fail. They do, and the defenders actually root their enemy, even capturing the general in charge who orders a retreat when he sees them coming down the hill. Keeping in mind how smoky old battlefields got from the type of powder used, they were practically fighting in a fog bank. The attacker leadership saw the charging forces and assumed that the only sane reason for a countercharge was that those reinforcements had arrived meaning his people were about to be overrun, so he ordered the retreat to save who he could. The dude in charge was Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain of the 20th Maine Volunteer Infantry. He single-handedly staved off Confederate victory on the second day of the Battle of Gettysburg. Edit, corrected the day, and I get it, single. Handedly is hyperbolic. Thanks to everyone actually providing helpful embellishment. Napoleon was short. The dude in charge was Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain of the 20th Maine Volunteer Infantry. He single-handedly staved off Confederate victory on the second day of the Battle of Gettysburg. Edit, corrected the day and I get it single. Handedly, it's hyperbolic. Thanks to everyone actually providing helpful embellishment. God wants you to give money to the church. Edit. Why do I have 78 notifications? He loves you, and he needs money. He always needs money. He's all powerful, all perfect, all knowing, and all wise, but somehow just can't handle money. 
Oh, I remember something like this. I was waiting for someone before at a convenience store. I think I just finished my classes or work, don't remember anymore, it was a few years ago already. I was eating a sandwich I ordered and a middle-aged man approached me, asking for a donation for a church. I wasn't really good at saying no to those things, so I just said, I didn't have an extra, but time, and maybe next time. He looked annoyed and told me that the Lord blesses those who gives and wouldn't I like to go to heaven. I got really annoyed, but I couldn't say anything to him, cause he looked scary, so I eyed an employee in case I would need help. Good thing the annoying man left and the person I was waiting for arrived shortly. These type of people are the reason why I'm super annoyed to super religious people. They're super judgy and would condemn you if they get a chance. My sister's childhood friend comes from a super religious family. They're typically very private about it. You'd never know they went to church so frequently. One day, the friend tells my sister in a very matter, a fact way, well, you're going to hell, so it doesn't matter to me. These are two adults. They were having a normal conversation. My sister inquired further and the friend was dead serious. She didn't think my sister's opinion mattered because she was going to be punished in the afterlife and she herself was not. Bizarre and creepy. My favorite quote regarding things like this comes from an MC in a video game. I've never met a priest who could tell you anything about heaven, but they knew every square inch of hell. They should be built in. If you work hard, you'll be rich. Oh, I remember something like this. I was waiting for someone before at a convenience store. I think I just finished my classes or work. Don't remember anymore. It was a few years ago already. I was eating a sandwich I ordered and a middle-aged man approached me, asking for a donation for a church. I wasn't really good at saying no to those things, so I just said I didn't have an extra that time and maybe next time. He looked annoyed and told me that the Lord blesses those who gives and wouldn't I like to go to heaven. I got really annoyed, but I couldn't say anything to him because he looked scary, so I eyed an employee in case I would need help. Good thing the annoying man left and the person I was waiting for arrived shortly. These type of people are the reason why I'm super annoyed to super religious people. They're super judgy and would condemn you if they get a chance. Peace in our time. Chamberlain trickle, down supply. Side economics. The fat is bad campaign waged by the sugar industry. The cake, the cake. Sigh, sigh. That surgically bigger lips look good. Mormonism. 17 million members worldwide, made from complete and absolute utter nonsense and bullshit. Columbus discovered America. Never mind the existing population here, he was about 500 years behind other European explorers. Jeffrey Epstein killed himself. 